Hello and welcome to Chapter 6 from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. In this chapter, we're going to talk about continuous probability distributions, and specifically the normal distribution. In the last chapter, we did discrete probability distributions, where we're dealing with a discrete random variable, such as the number of heads in three tosses of a coin, or say the number of cashews in a handful of 20 nuts. Right? Um, Specifically, back then, we were talking about a discrete random variable. Now we're going to be talking about continuous random variables, with some exceptions later on in the chapter. So in order to start um, to make that conversion, um, let's, let's, let's consider a continuous random variable such as the weights of adult men, right? And if we were to make a relative frequency histogram for, the, for that uh, variable, then what we would do is we would break this up into classes, right? Here's the class from 125 to 175, a class from 175 to 225, and so on. So these are the classes. And the bars represent the relative frequencies. And they're written in decimal as opposed to percentage for a reason that we'll get into in a second. But so the one thing to notice is that, you know, we can get we can think of these as probabilities. Right, so for example, the probability of randomly selecting a man with a weight between 175 and 225 is 0 0.30. Probability of randomly selecting a man between 225 and 275 is 0.25. What you should notice is that if you add up all of these relative frequencies, or all of these probabilities, they sum to 1. Right? So all those uh, probabilities add up to 1. Now what we can do, because this is a continuous variable, we can actually refine our class widths, right? Instead of them making, instead of them being, say, 50 units apart, we can cut that in half, or in third, or in tenths. And what happens to our histogram is that the bars get thinner. But the relative frequencies, or the probabilities, if you were to add all of these up, they would still add up to 1, right? So that's pretty important. You've got to keep that in mind. So these still sum to 1, right? And then we can go again and refine even further. And when we refine this even further, the, the, the widths of the classes get very thin, and our histogram starts to resemble a curve. Right? You can sort of see the curve getting started right here. Um, and, the, and the class widths are too small to fit the probabilities in there, but, but if you could, they would still sum to 1. Again, a recurring theme here. So if in the continuum, if we refine our class widths to be infinitely thin, what we get is a probability density curve. Right? So there's no more bars, it's just a single curve. And the important thing about this curve, <coughs> and um, probability density curves in general, is that the total area under the curve is 1. Right? So that is a requirement of a probability density curve. And we'll get into the normal distribution here in the next chapter. So hopefully this sort of tra transitions us from discrete random variables into a continuous random variable. And I will see you in chapter 6.1. Bye.